Recently, I showed you how to use server components using Nuxt, but let's take a look at how it works with Next.js. Let's create a quick AI app and let's compare and contrast how Next.js and Nuxt.js works in this department. Also, if you can, please leave a comment below. Let me know if you have learned anything in AI and what your favorite AI technology is. So here is the application that we're gonna to create today that I'm gonna show you that I used creating with Next.js. It's surrounded by this authenticator, so only authenticated users can log in and use it. So I'm just going to log in real quickly. Once I'm logged in, it's going to ask me for a list of ingredients. So let's imagine a scenario where you are a chef and you're trying to figure out what to serve everyone. You have a list of ingredients, but you're not sure. So you can list all the ingredients out here and then click create recipe and then it'll use ChatGPT to grab that information. So for example, let's say we're creating something with oranges, salad, pecans. Uh, we just hit enter. It's gonna go ahead and look it up and then it's going to read it out to us as well. Ingredients, two oranges peeled and sliced, two cups of salad greens, one quarter cup of pecans chopped. Instructions, one. So it's a simple concept, but it's really interesting how we can do this using Next.js. So here is the application here. And I wanted to start with how I set this up. So if we look inside our Explorer here, we have a, a number of different directories. The layout directory is kind of the main directory. And what I did here is I surrounded it by auth. Uh, so I have, if, if you look inside the package.json here, I have uh, I'm using the AWS Amplify library. So I just installed a couple of these libraries, AWS Amplify UI React and AWS Amplify. And then I ran a command called uh, Amplify init, that is, and that set up my application. Now, if I look here real quickly, if I ran Amplify status, then I can see what is installed on here right now. So you can see I have a couple of categories. I have auth and I have predictions. And predictions is kind of a, unknown or not as well known category that AWS offers. So you can do things like text to speech, speech to text. It also even allows you to do like emotion analysis. So it has some really neat features. So I went ahead and added that in. This is the layout. The layout surrounds the whole application. And I created this new component called auth. And what this does is it sets up AWS Amplify and it uses this thing called the authenticator, which adds a uh, with a few lines of boilerplate, you can add in a full login system to your application. The way this works, since I'm using the app router with Next.js 13, uh, this automatically, this is a server component, but server components can have client components, components in them. And since I'm using this children, I can now have like a server component inside here. So what this does is it requires you to have to log in first before you can get access to your application. But once you're logged in, it, you'll be sent to this pages folder. Now this is completely ran on the server. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting up AWS Amplify on the server. So it works on the server. And then I just added a couple of global variables and I created this client component called logged in. And so with this logged in component will display as soon as the user logs in. And then I have a few props that I'm passing to it, including this one called grab data. So while I was thinking about how the architecture of this will be, uh, if you looked at my, if you saw my previous video using view and creating an AI component, uh, you can see here, I used the API routes. So in, in, in essence, what I did is I created a new API route called recipe. It was a post, which means you can only access it through post. And then it, it, ran, uh, it ran this API query through the open API. Open API. Uh, one thing I was trying to do in my last video, if you saw it, was to try to see how you can do, and this is a Nux.js application, how we can do uh, server components. And I ran into some issues with how server components work in Nux right now. It's an experimental feature so it does have uh, some issues. However, there is a little bit better support, I think a Next.js for server components and also something called server actions. At first, when I was creating this application, I was gonna do it exactly the same way I was doing it in the Next app by creating an API route, which you can do. You can create an API folder here in this app and do it. 
However, I thought it would be more interesting if we could try to create it using uh, server components and server action. And what this is a nice thing about server action is, and if you don't know, if you've never heard server actions before, basically it's an alpha feature in Next.js that builds on top of React actions. They enable server-side data mutations, reduce client-side JavaScript, and progressively enhance forms. They can be defined inside the server components or are called from client components. And that's a really important distinction is that with server actions, you can use it inside client components, which is typically something you can't do with server components in Next.js. Normally, you can't have you can't have a client component, component import like a server component or call like a server function like that, but with actions, you can. So what I did is inside this next config, I had to go in and add in server actions colon true. So this allows you to use this new experimental feature. And then what I did is you can either create a folder, but what I did is I put in this main, this is this is all, this page.tsx is run in server. You add this use server at the top, and this creates a server action. And a server action can be, most often you see it used with forms, like in the examples in this documentation, you can see it's, it's passed into forms, but you don't have to pass it into forms. You can use it directly, uh, you can pass it into uh, your client components and then call them directly, which is really nice. So what I did is this grab data, instead of creating an API endpoint like I did in view, this essentially is gonna do everything for me. So this is gonna run on the server. It gets the, it runs this get recipes, which is just a utility file, which does the same thing you saw in that server route. It's gonna call get recipes. It's gonna run this very simple open API chat GPT prompt, which by the way, I already installed the open API package. It's gonna pass in this configuration into it. One thing that's a little interesting here is that I'm returning back what's coming back from this completion and it's being returned back into the server action here. So uh, right here, so it, this awaits it, it puts it in this ants. But the problem is, is that server actions like right here, when you use use server, I can't just have this return something. At least in, in my experience, you can't. So I created these global variables called answer and play text. And what I did is I just took the answer from it and it's all typed correctly, by the way, which was really nice. And I put it into this text and then I used this format text to HTML, which is this very simple, not so good, but just a simple utility that's kind of cleans up the output that comes back from chat GPT or open AI. So it's a little bit nicer format and I added and basically make it into HTML. I use this something called revalidate path, which essentially revalidates the whole path. So it kind of reloads sort of like refresh, but not really. It's kind of way it's a, a caching method to revalidate the, the route you're on. And then basically it sends it back to this logged in component. So here's all my props, grab data, answers, text. I go into logged in data and here's my TypeScript. I have grab data, answers, and text. And I have this use effect that essentially says, uh, as soon as this text change, it runs this play command. So at the beginning, text is just answers, nothing. Text is play text. So play text is nothing at the beginning. But when you get in here, uh, once it changes, it'll run this play command, uh, which runs this, which uses our text to speech command using amplifies predictions category. And that's what makes it be able to uh, speak things out. I could have made this a little simpler and just added a button that played it, but I thought it'd be interesting. Like as soon as it loads, it plays it. And so now for this one, you use this use client. So this tells, basically this tells Next.js that this is a client component. I'm using the Amplify UI React library here. So that's, these are just some nice uh, primitives that I can use in my app. So I'm using this flex, I'm using this main, and then I'm using this view, it's a form, and on submit, I'm submitting, and I have some uh, ingredients. So this is my input where I'm putting in the comma delim delimited number of ingredients. And then I have this button here that soon, this should actually be, Here's a bug here, this should be type, uh, I think it's type submit. Yeah, type submit here. And what happens is as soon as you submit it, it runs this on submit command. I prevent default so it doesn't try to refresh. And then I grab the data form, which is basically what you need to be able to use it. I, these are, this is uncontrolled inputs in React, so I'm not using, uh, I'm not using like a use state with this. 
So I'm just resetting the form. And then I'm running the start transition, which uh, this is essentially the way, since we know that's gonna take a little bit of time for this grab data to, to work, this is what the start transition does. And if you can hear, see here, it does use transition here. This is kind of a way of handling uh, loading states. And you actually get this is pending free from it, which is really nice. So this triggers this grab data. So I'm calling the server action uh, directly from a client component, which is really awesome. So I don't have to have an API endpoint in this client component, I'm just calling it directly. And I think I actually have, oh, I don't have a, a type here, that's fine. I think I could do like type void, would that work? Yeah, there you go. Some little TypeScript. And then I'm using this is pending. So as soon as you uh, it submits the form, it disables it. And I have some CSS that kind of grays it out so you can't click on it. And then I do this data form dot reset, which is just a really simple way of resetting the form. That way the text is just disappears. Once again, like I said, I'm doing uncontrolled inputs here. I, obviously if this was production, I'd probably do a bunch of more checks here to make sure that the inputs is correct, but this is fine for what I'm doing. So for like a standpoint of like simplicity, if I had to compare how I'm doing this on the view side with, you know, see here in the view side, I have this on submit. I'm just doing a fetch command to that API route to the API recipe, I'm grabbing the data and then essentially doing the same thing. I'm running this format to text. I'm using this simple loading value. And then I'm using, uh, by the way, in, in, in React and in, in, in Vue, you can have this uh, way of, of having strings converted directly over to HTML. And in the React world and probably wherever you are, you gotta be very careful with this. So the, you, this is called dangerously set H, at H, HTML. Obviously you want to escape that and make some checks to make sure you're not putting bad stuff into your HTML. You could do the same thing in view with this V dash HTML as well. But if, I, if I'm kind of comparing between this next and uh, this next and uh, Nuxt implementation, the Nuxt version, the view version is quite a bit simpler if you're just using a endpoint. Cause I kind of see this really well. I'm like, here's an on submit. I'm getting the data back. I'm trimming it, I'm sending it to this play function, and then I'm displaying it here. While in this kind of example with the with Next and using server actions, you do kind of get the benefit that this is all run on the server. You can, I could have refactored this into its own server actions folder and imported into if I wanted. But other than that, it, this is kind of feels a little bit more complicated and I'm sure there's, multiple ways of doing this. Like I said, I could have done this just with exactly the way I did it in the view side, uh, but I thought this was kind of an interesting uh, interesting approach of how you might want to deal with dealing with data. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What do you like better? I'll put a link to this GitHub too, so you guys can kind of scrutinize and look at it. And let me know if you like better the next version or the Nux version. Uh, one last thing I'll, I'll say too, is this form actions, there is an ongoing, I guess there is a, a progressive enhancement feature that's being talked about. Uh, recently, it's been closed. Um, I think they're thinking about adding in like this type of form actions and adding better these type of better actions into Nux, which I'm really excited if that'll happen in the future. There's also Antfu has this server. It's not exactly like server actions in Next in, in the React ecosystem, but it also has a different way to kind of talk to server, uh, more simpler server functions to having, instead of having API routes. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks.